All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for tuning in and thank you so much for your support. Um, some of you might be our regular viewers. Uh, thank you so, so much for your continuous presence. Your presence means a lot to all of us at AICI Malaysia. And for those who are tuning in for the first time, thank you so much. We are very much delighted to seeing you here tonight. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to Interchange Forum. Tonight is our 13th episode. And tonight's live forum is specially brought to you by AICI Third Asia Conference Kuala Lumpur, which will be held on the 26th to 28th March 2021. And um, for those who are pretty new to AICI, let me share brief about AICI. AICI stands for Association of Image Consultant International and AICI is the leading and largest professional association of personal and corporate image consultants worldwide. And AICI has 34 chapters all over the world with global headquarters in the US. And in Malaysia, uh, the Malaysia chapter was founded by Ms. Sheila Wong more than a decade ago. And Ms. Sheila Wong is also the conference chair of AICI Third Asia Conference 2021. So we'll talk more about the conference at the end of tonight's session. Okay, so as you, can, as you have read on the poster, the topic tonight is, is pretty much relevant to what is happening at this point of time. So because of COVID-19 pandemic, we all can relate truly and deeper that more than ever, the realization that the only source or rather resource we have when, when everything else is going against us is that what we are made of as a human being, right? which is what we call, I think this is pretty much um, familiar to all of us, is our mindset. So, and our mindset formed our belief about ourselves, and that will have a direct impact on our success or our failure, we like it or not, right? And um, tonight's, tonight's topic, we will be delving deep into a set of how to that emerge out of personal and professional experiences and encounters that speak volume around the ever omnipotent power of human mindset, or my mindset, or your mindset, which is the practice of harnessing resilience through personal growth and professional development. So without further ado, let me now introduce our two distinguished guests. I'll start with Joanna. Okay, let me read uh, Joanna's um, profile. Joanna Sue Henry Rampas is a prominent personality in Borneo. She initiated many social responsibilities around the interior of Sabah, aka rural communities in Sabah. That includes the Poverty Eradication Program of Sabah. And she is currently a political secretary to the Chief Minister of Sabah. And Joanna is the chairwoman of the Sabah State Unduk Ngadau. All right, and also a candidate for public, was also a candidate for public office in the Malaysian 14th general election. All right, and um, Vivian T. Sarjuni has a broad background specialized in education, community, and capacity building. She is currently leading Sabah Creative Economy and Innovation Center as a general manager. Her agenda is to push innovation and creativity across industries and all walks of life as she inspires or aspires to build resilient communities in Sabah, especially during these tough times. And um, she's also the founder of Borneo Sarap Community, 
or Bosco. This is a community driven group that aims to build entrepreneurial mindset or minded startup communities by driving innovation and creativity among entrepreneurs across all business stages in Borneo. All right. And thank you so much, uh, Joanna. Hi. Thank you Hi. so much, Evienti. We are privileged to have both of you on AICI Interchange Forum. A pleasure, Jacqueline. Thank you. All right. So, again, in this Interchange Forum, we would like to learn uh, more from both of you real life stories on how uh, Joanna and Vivianti harness resilience through personal growth and de development. All right. And perhaps by listening to your stories, that will help us or rather to ignite some form of light bulb moments that we all can you know apply and so that we can have that muscles to continue braving life's challenges especially in this point of time right so mm -hmm. i've actually prepared a few questions and let me without further ado i think let me ask the first question um, i shall um, ask joanna the first question question which is how do you personally relate to or describe tonight's topic harnessing resilience through personal growth and development okay uh first of all thank you so much jacqueline and uh, for aici for um, having me tonight with all of you and before i go any further i would just would like to do a bit of correction on the um, introduction side just now that i was the chairman for the Yungdoknada was <laughs> so yeah not this year right of course due to the pandemic as well but um as well i would like to also say hi to my uh to my other per my colleague on this session today <laughs> which is vivianti so it's such a pleasure to be with all of the um, you know all of you all here tonight so coming back to the question of how do i personally relate to um of tonight's topic you see on harnessing resilience through personal growth and development now this is a very interesting topic as you have highlighted earlier that this is a topic that should be you know uh should i say highlighted to all um mostly to all of our you know uh, youth and not only youth but uh you know everyone out there and uh generally speaking you know personal growth and development is basically a personal thing for me um, everyone has their own mind, okay? And it is something that you can't really standardize, okay? When you talk about personal growth. Um, there are various targets to achieve, you know? Probably, you know, uh, there are a few areas that, you know, a person wants to achieve in life. You have family, uh, you have careers, you have finances, you have health and you have uh, spiritual you know, Vivianti might have something, maybe she would want her career to be her priority or, you know, maybe yourself, Jacqueline, you, would some, you want something else to be a priority. And as myself, for myself, it would be family and career, you see. So those are the two things that are, you know, priorit uh, I prioritize. However, resilience at the same time is that ineff ineffable quality, okay, uh, that allows someone to be knocked down by life and come back stronger than ever. Right, so rather than letting uh, failure to overcome them, and they find ways to uh, rise from the ashes, uh, from the ashes. So, however, I would like to share perhaps on my personal um, growth and development um, uh, four things that I would like to share with you all. Uh, first and foremost, you know, there is this. Uh, saying that goes that where is there is when there is no vision people will perish all right and i truly believe that and the first thing that uh, uh one person i think you know everyone should have would be a destination right you have to decide of what it should be and how to get there and who you can rely to help you to get to your destination the second thing that you must have as well is a target in life Okay, so with this target, you could measure your progress. And of course, you will have to also reassess any corrections that you need to make. So um, my 
mom and dad has always said when I grew up, she said, don't be afraid of failing things, not failing your exams, but, you know, failing, you know, things that you indulge in life, you know, um, and make adjustments at the appropriate time. And, uh, you know, sometimes things doesn't follow plan, but um, moving the goalposts, I think, for me personally, is not a failure, but it's rather accepting reality um, and adjusting to the current situation that you're in. Thirdly, is having a mentor or having your own role model, okay? And, um, and fourth is um, the most important thing is honesty and clarity. You must be very, very clear of what you want in life and you have to be honest, completely honest to yourself and be clear of what you want because for me, I personally think that self-deception is also a failure. Wow, that's really deep. And that gets me right on my face. Like, oh my goodness, this is really like, I have to get myself be reminded of this all the time. You know, it's always at the back of your mind, but unless you see it and you internalize it, that's where you see the relevance of it. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much for that sharing. And uh, let's hear from you, Avivianti, the first question. Uh, thank you, Jack. Thank you, AICI as well. Um, to me, I think I've heard of this word resilience quite frequently, eh, Jack, since the beginning of pandemic this year. And um, I am, of course, very happy because uh, when you first mentioned about this topic, I was very happy because this is one of my favorite topics to discuss. And I think uh, personal development is... Uh, really the foundation of success uh, it's 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 a continuous process to be better in life and uh, experiences be it uh, good or bad will shape you and um, eventually build your uh, resilience but to me um, this thing can also be a double-edged sword uh, whether you take it positively bounce back and learn from it or keep on dwelling and um, in the end it will crush you so uh, I'm not a professional motivator but um, I can say that I've had and still continue to have my fair share of struggles and um, I don't mind to share uh, with the audience about my um, experiences overcoming all those challenges yeah, definitely one of my favorite topics to be discussed interesting yeah, I love the idea that that's the foundation of everything that you want to achieve in life because life means up, ups and downs. Um, yes, I true. think it's about sailing through those. And um, one of, the, one of the, the tools, if I can say tools, that we need to have is really about you being resilient. And it's something that we can harness. Harness is something Definitely. that you can acquire and it's something that we can learn. Mm. And how do we learn it? It, it, depend, it depends on the individual. Right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I'll, we'd love to know more about your stories later. Probably we can sure. hear further. Uh, <laughs> I think that answered a few of um, one of the questions that we have sent it to you. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, let's go to the next question, which is um, how do you see the relevance of harnessing resilience through personal growth and development in this time of crisis of this uh, COVID nineteen pandemic? So probably, Vivianti, would you like to start on that? You are muted. Vivi, you are muted. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, very relevant. And I think um, each and every one of us needs to build resilience within themselves, especially during this uh, tough time. Uh, we will never know what's going to happen in the future, can Jack? Uh, if not pandemic, it could be other things. Um, uh, but you see, this pandemic, it came without uh, warning and it happened so fast. So yeah, this COVID-19 is really one of its kind. And can you imagine, Jack, a small, tiny virus that has affected almost everyone in every country in this world? So... Um, but I'm also very sure there must be something that uh, we could learn from this pandemic. No one is excluded from kids to adults. Each generation faces different challenges at, at their level. And um, uh, 
I see this as a blessing in disguise as well because in a way, it has taught us something uh, very valuable and built that uh, resilience within ourselves to overcome challenges. So that's, that's my view. All right. Yes, I think again, I, I think I can relate to uh, Joanna's uh, point earlier and accepting reality right mm. and at this point of time when you say that um, everyone is affected well obviously yeah. everyone is affected regardless mm. um, even regardless of how big is your bank account <laughs> you're still facing this right and um, so. at, the end, um, at the end of the day is accepting reality and how are we going to do about it right and okay. because it's something i think um we've been we've been bombarding with these words um coming from um from from everyone that we have to look at what we can control over rather than you know dwelling on yeah. what what has happened or what is happening and we can't do anything about that right so yeah i like that idea around you know accepting the reality and how we can go forward from where we are at this point of time all right so let's hear from you joanna what do you think about um the second question right we're talking about you know uh harnessing resilience to personal growth during this crisis. Um, obviously, it, it, I, I agree to what uh, Vivianti has said just now, that even, you know, even children are affected by this, you know, their parents, youth, um, older generation, everyone is actually frontliners as well. They're all affected by this, you know. Um, and I think that everyone should also give it some thought, you see. The problem of this virus is that, you know, the restriction is really out of your hands, um, you know. So basically, it's a matter of reacting as opposed to, uh, as, as opposed to planning, you see. So we have to be quick on reacting or whatever is happening right now. I know some people will go like, oh, you know, this is the end of my life, you know. I mean, I fully understand that a lot of our you know, especially the youth right now, they're retrenched from jobs. And then um, a lot of the um, graduates would, would have a problem of having, you know, jobs uh, within the next couple of years or so. And um, loss of income also is a huge issue during this pandemic. And um, if you have been, you know, following a lot of social medias, you know, some of uh, friends, you know, acquaintances, and you have seen that they're very depressed sometimes. Mm -hmm. in, in, you see, sometimes people, they would like, they would express themselves in Facebook. And, and I actually acknowledge that because from there, you can actually see that what they really feel and they feel so down, you know, when um, you know, the loss of incomes and, and, but to be fair, I mean, I really respect a lot of the the housewives i've seen so far that you know they're trying so much of other ways they're being in you know, uh, creative and you know uh, uh, innovative you see they've been baking cakes selling cakes yeah. and things like that and i i am like i'm like i just I, I can't even cook myself you know and when i look at that and some of them are teachers because some uh, you know during the last three months to four months they they haven't been going to school and teaching, so they look for other uh, alternatives as well. So they've been um, cooking, and then some of them, they've been calling me and said, do you want to taste my food and things like that? You I mean, like, I'm, I'm very supportive of that, you see, and I, I, I'm proud of these women. I'm proud of them who are looking for extra incomes, you see. Like, for example, as well, um, here in Sabah, you know, as, as a whole, um, Tourism industry is one of the industry that is, uh, um, you know, uh, that's boosting our economy before this. But of course, we don't have any more, you know, tourists coming in. So we have, uh, you know, Motac actually has estimated a loss of about 45 billion in the first half here in Malaysia. And um, among the most affected workforce will be the service industries, such as accommodation, uh, food and beverages, arts, entertainments, recreationals. In fact, you know, I have pilot friends and they were telling me that, okay, there's no more flights going here and there everywhere. So I would say, you know, I, I'm, I, I, feel, I feel their 
they are, you know, they, I feel how it is as well. And therefore, I think um, the most important thing is to reinvent yourself during this pandemic, is to reinvent yourself. And you must have the ability to survive in times of crisis. And how do you survive in this time of crisis? That's another question that we're going to um, you ask, you see. It's how you change or do things normally, like, for example, income cuts. So therefore, you really need to look closely at your expenditures and think how you make extra monies. Uh, you know, you have to keep budget within your means. You know, maybe, you know, you, have, you used to go traveling before this once in three months or once in six months. That's not going to happen again for the next one year or so. But I think the most important thing is that, you see, like any other crisis, there will be an end. So I really hope that they can get a vaccine for this COVID-19 as soon as possible. Uh, but however, in this time situation, survival instinct kicks in. And the most, the ultimate thing is we cannot give up. Just do not give up. Yeah, that's my thought about it. <laughs> right. So hearing from you, um, it, it gets me to reflect what's happening in the, the situation when um, you have less like those in a rural area yeah right? yeah so um perhaps you can we, we we are still in the second questions um i think it's not only during crisis but when you are in a situation where you are experiencing um challenges mm -hmm. right uh, that's where then you know at the end of the day it's you have to re to go back to yourself and what is it that i have as opposed to what is it i don't have Right, that's where then you can get, get, gain the strength to move forward, um, exactly. to do something, at least to do something. But at the end of the day, again, your profession, Joanna, especially, uh, it might be a bit uh, challenging for you um, because there's some form of attachment that, that or rather responsibility, perceived responsibility that, you know, you need to help me, you know, this kind of stuff. So would you like to tell us more about that, you know, th th your experience? Right. Okay, this is very interesting. Perhaps I could share some of my experience during the MCO. Um, yes, um, during the last three months, okay, it has been very, very tough in some rural areas. And uh, things that I have uh, uh, realized that especially uh, those who rely a lot on um, their agriculture uh, produce, Okay, so every week, for example, I'll just give a, a very, um, uh, this one, a, a simple example from where I come from, which is Kiulu, okay? And every Tuesday, you have this thing called Tamu, okay? And on Wednesdays, they go to Tamu, uh, Tuesdays, Tamu Kiulu, and Wednesdays, Tamu Tamparuli, right? And these are the places where they get their incomes all the time. But of course, during, uh, during the MCO, um, you can't, there's no tamu, right? And, and a lot of them have been planting, um, say for example, pineapples and other agriculture produce as well. And they just rot like that, you see? And um, so basically from, you know, from, from uh, my, my, my path, you see, from the state government, not really state governments, but actually initiative that we could help is to facilitate them to sell you know, the agriculture products that they have. I mean, if you've seen the news, you know, you have um, farmers in Ranao where all their cabbages are, raw, are rotten because nobody wants to buy it and everything like that. So in, in, in their, the government, the state government actually has come in to facilitate um, them to actually sell all this produce mm -hmm. from Kampo to the urban area, okay? And um, as uh, you mentioned earlier at the introduction, um, we have this uh, program, or well, I, I, me and my, uh, my team, uh, not, we have initiated a program, a pilot project last year, which was called Kaki Kaki Kampo. Mm -hmm. So the initial idea was actually to put together the willing seller and buyer, right? And the problem was that the kampung people could only sell their local produce at Tamus, as I said earlier, which means that they can only earn kampung prices. So what we did was that um, uh, the team have connected the dots uh, by buying uh, 
from having buyers from the urban areas to buy their products at a reasonable price. And in the meantime, these buyers will also sell their products that would be hard to obtain in the kampong, okay, at a reasonable price to the kampong people as well. So during the, so that was last year, but little that I know that that program, that initiative that we have started last year had helped a lot during this pandemic because, you know, this um, middleman, should I call this middleman, would go to the kampong and start buying their produce right and starting selling it to the to the urban area so these are the initiatives that we have been uh, helping the kampong people of course you know there are other uh, ministries as well that have been helping but that is from my personal um, initiative yeah all right so in your situation it's slightly different in a sense that um, yeah resilience also comes from not only for yourself but it's also a realization that yeah i am i have the capacity so therefore i will use that um, to also you know, facilitate some form yeah. of support to those in need. Mm -hmm. um, I like that very much. It's a different perspective of resilience. A lot, most of the time it's about you being, you know, um, thinking around, you have to strengthen your root. You have yeah. to strengthen your, 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 your construction. But resilience comes from also you support others. Yes, yeah. It comes mm -hmm. from the realization that I can support others and therefore that will be bring a community that is resilient. So I think this one probably uh, Vivian T. <laughs> more. So perhaps that's also, I think uh, we go straight to the number three question, which is... But uh, yeah. before that, Jack, can, yeah. can, can I mention last um, yeah, sure. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Joanna as well. I remember, I don't know if you still remember this, during MCO, I texted her at, I think, maybe 11 p.m., because oh. <laughs> something happened, something happened at the at the grassroots um, uh, with the community that we engage with, and uh, yeah, something happened, and at that time, like I didn't have a choice but to text Joanna, and she, you know, has been very wonderful. Um, Sudi oh, reply my my <laughs> SMS, and thank you so much for that, Joanna, thank and you. Thank you. and within like maybe two hours settled. So yeah, yeah. well done. I mean, really. Thank I, mean, you, thank you I was like, should I text or not? Should I text? It's eleven p.m. at night. But I, I guess um, during pandemic, kind like you really don't know um, how to uh, how to react, what to expect. So I guess like um, I hope like everyone can be uh, forgiving lah. So <laughs> minta maaf juga lah ya, Joanna. <laughs> but it's okay. Thank you so much. But I think. It's it's, you know, during this pandemic, it's not about resilience, your self-resilience, but also within the community. So we are here, you know, Vivianti might have her, her expertise, you know, she's in, in, in a, you know, she, she's the founder of Ponyo Startup Communities. So, you know, maybe after this, after this session, I'll definitely be looking for you and I'm like, okay, <laughs> you need to help people in this area, in this area to start up. No yeah. problem. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Before I move on to the next question, I would like to also acknowledge this conversation between both of you. This is a real, um, a good, a great example about collaboration because at mm. the end of the day, working, there's no sustainability working in silo, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. all about collaboration, regardless of what you do, regardless of what industry, regardless whether you're working for the state government or you're working for your own. So mm -hmm. I guess, um, I think it's very important for all of us to, to first thing, willing to strengthen each other, yeah. um, you know, because that will actually expand the opportunity to go beyond and most importantly, to go together and be strong together. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay, let me read the third question. Um, maybe I can uh, forward that to Vivi to answer, mm. yeah? Uh, based on your personal experience, uh, how has resilience through personal growth and development um, completed you, uh, your career, business, mm. or achievement? What are the challenges you have overcame or you have overcome? Okay, so um, I'm not muted. Okay. Right, so <laughs> I'd like to tell my story from uh, two major events in my life. Um, first, uh, when I grew up in this uh, very rural area in Buluran, Buluran called uh, Pamol Plantation. I don't know if you guys have heard that. 
Um, but yeah, I was born in a small town called Beaufort. But when I was seven, um, my dad, who was a teacher, was was transferred there at uh, this palm oil plantation as a school principal. And um, I, I must give credit to my father as well, because uh, to me, I, I grew up learning from him. Um, he was not upset when he got transferred to this rural area and uh, which at that time was only accessible by about two hours from uh, I can't remember but definitely belum ada jalan raya lah at that time so to me um, not only uh, was he a teacher but also a community builder who believes in everyone's potential so um, access to education at that time pun was quite limited uh, but he persevered and made the best out of what was available at that time for the sake of the uh, rural community despite many challenges. And uh, this, the school was eventually uh, awarded as Sekolah Harapan Negara Kategori Luar Bandar. So from there, watching him working, communicating with people from different backgrounds, yeah, um, uh, handling crises, I learned resilience grit and um, uh, everything is to me lah everything is possible if if you really put your heart and soul into it um, second was uh, definitely spending uh, 22 years in the peninsula since i was 18 um, as you know kan jack culture is different yeah. uh, challenges pun different uh, dealing with the stigma that we are not we are incompetent and women can can never lead um, having to live independently far from your family so these um, experiences definitely has has uh, taught me a lot especially in character building and and also uh, shaping uh, my my perspective in life uh, how I overcame those challenges when I look back uh, I think uh, Joanna also mentioned this before um, when I look back I always have mentors in life uh, there is this saying, um, you don't meet people by accident. They are meant to cross our path for, for a reason. And these mentors could be your friends or strangers. So whenever you, you meet anyone who motivates you, who believes in you, don't let go of this person. Um, another thing uh, I, I like to mention here is um, I love uh, exploring different perspectives or different uh, views in life. Uh, to me, this is very important in making uh, important decisions. To me, this is crucial because sometimes um, you need to look at uh, from a different angle. So appreciating different perspectives and views can make a huge difference in overcoming challenges in life. So th these two, uh, what I normally uh, do lah when when I want to apa ni, when I want to overcome challenges in life. So mentor and also um, try to seek different perspectives, different views from from uh, friends or family. Wow. As I'm listening to you, I'm 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 listening to myself. Ah. <laughs> the same story. I mean being here for the longest time, you're facing a lot of this uh, mm. yeah. Um, but yeah, me really, it. I mean, mentors and um, be, I think being aware about, or rather, I like the words, I want to use this again and again, accepting the reality. Mm. <laughs> because that's where then you appreciate the differences and you are then yeah. be able to rationalize why certain people have this perception towards your, your variation. Your I agree. version of certain things, right? I agree. So yeah. Really, I mean, thank you so much for sharing that. And let's um, hear from Joanna. Question that, number three. Yeah. Uh, based on my personal experience of how I, uh, how has resilience through my personal growth and development uh, catapulted, yeah, uh, in my career, in, in, in my achievements. So, um, I think I have the same, uh, you know, uh, thing with um, uh, Vivianti as well, where being in another country or in a new place has actually built uh, my character. Um, I left house, well, not 
literally like left house, but let's say my mom let me go out of the house at the age of 18, where I went to KL, okay, and I did my um, A-levels and uh, I did a bit of work there at that time, um, up to about uh, 2012. Yeah, 2008 to 2012. So that was about a good four years in KL at the age of 18. Um, and then after that, I went to the UK uh, for about six years. I, I studied and then I worked there for a bit. And so you see, being in another, in, a, in, a, in an alien place when you're alone there actually really builds you up because, you know, you are 11,000 kilometers away from your mom and dad and you just have to do things on your own. Living in London is, is just totally crazy at that point, you know, and there were times where I thought to myself of what, like, why am I here? Why can't I just go back home, you know, in KK? You know, this was before I, I, I joined in politics, you see. So my experience in Kuala Lumpur at a very young age and as well as in the UK um, has actually really built my character in being independent. Okay, that is the first thing, you see. As a woman, I think, you know, for me, I don't know, but this is how I think, you know. Um, as a woman, uh, you know, you, you, you have your own, you have to have your own independence to think, you see. At times, my mom will tell me at that point, she say, uh, you come home, you see, you will have a, a job here, you know, you settle down here and things like that. But I'm like, no, mom, I want to experience life outside first and then we'll see, you know, what will come. But so by my parents, my dad was very supportive of me. And of course, you know, um, I had a very humble, uh, let's should I say, beginnings as well, because I grew up in Kampung Paturidong Kyulu which is why now I, I, have, I, I can speak very fluent Lusun, okay? Milai berarti takuri, ka? Paham, paham. Harapi Lusun, okay? Harapi, harapi. So, you know, as we know, you know, maybe to our viewers who are from the peninsula, Lusun language or the Karazan Lusun Murut Rungus language is, uh, I would say it's a dying language, you know? Not a lot of the young generation knows how to speak this language fluently. And I was very, very um, lucky that uh, my grandmother, I, I grew up with my grandmother and I went to school in Kampong, right? And uh, of course, I'm the only half Orang Putih, half Dusun <laughs> at that point, okay? And I stick out like a sore thumb. But um, in fact, it was very, very interesting because I had the experience to live in a Kampong life, you know? Um, Jalan kaki pergi sekolah, bilang. I went through all of that. You see, I went to SK Pekan Kyulu, you know, and I, I had that experience of not only being in the Kampung, also being in Kuala Lumpur and being in the metropolitan city in the UK, you see. Yeah. So that really um, built my, you know, character, uh, the first bit. Now, being in politics, so I started politics in 2017, 16. Yeah, end of 16, 2017. So I've only been in politics for about three and a half years. So as a woman in politics, you know, having a career in politics, things can be very accurate at times, especially when you're a woman, you know, and you need to toughen up, you see. Everyone, you see your social media, whatever you do, everyone is looking at you. So that is the reality, okay? But it's not, I don't think it's only in politics, but there are other, other, other you know, um, industries as well. But just being focused on my personal um, story. Um, so when I stepped into the realm of politics, you see, I knew that public pleasure, public pleasure would be a biggest challenge for me, right? On top of that, as we know that here in Malaysia, in fact, you know, the whole wide world, we've seen that politics is basically, uh, basically monopolized by men right that that is for sure we know that's a fact <laughs> so to survive the choppy um waters of politics i think the only thing that has made me stay is staying laser focus on my work for the uh, for sabah and for the people of sabah that kept me on the railroad okay and uh i actually wish to prove as well that women are just capable mm -hmm. as men all right uh, in, in some cases, far better than men in terms of, uh, you know, uh, 
administration and all kinds of things. And I like what Margaret Thatcher has always said that if you want something said, you ask a woman, uh, you ask a man, <laughs> you want something done, you ask a woman. <laughs> so that is pretty much, you know, my personal experience of how I, how resilience through personal growth and development has helped me with my, my life. Yeah. Wow. You've been a very good role model, Joanna. I look up to you as well. Oh, thank um, you so much. Um, it, oh, as well as Jacqueline, um, both of you can speak yeah. Dusun fluently. I'm half <laughs> Dusun, but um, whatever you said just now, I did a faham. So, uh, but but I'll I'll make it um, apa ni to say uh, uh, how to say this? Like <laughs> I'll try to learn Dusun. Sementara I'm still in Sabah, so still learning. So wish me luck. <laughs> <laughs> you just have a chat with Joanna. <laughs> You'll definitely will, you know, grasp the, the 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 expertise or rather the fluency in a in a short period of time. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um. Let me acknowledge before we move on to the next question. Let me acknowledge a few of our audience. Um. Okay. We have a few of our, our friends here. Uh, Ernie. Uh, Nina Othman, also my friend Linda, also our uh, uh, conference chair, Sheila Wong, uh, Nick Adina, Tina Blaze, thank you so much for tuning in. Also our friend Selena Chong, Diane Sen, also the backup of, t of, of, of tonight's session, basically in, in case that I go, uh, go kaput with my internet, uh, someone is actually um, uh, on standby. Thank you so much, Diane. And also, <laughs> and a few people here, and Michelle from the Philippines. Thank you so much for tuning in, and Anja Julia, and a few more here. Let me read probably one of the um, acknowledgement. Yeah, uh, this is from Nina Othman. Uh, she said, "Idola Vivianti, thanks for sharing your story. Simple but deep. Thank you so much, Nina. Thank you, Nina. <laughs> and there's also." Um, a few more um, sort of like acknowledgement here. Thank you, ladies, for tuning in. And also, this is something um, something new for me from Sheila Wong. Dusun sounds like Tagalog to me. Yeah, actually, it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's move on to the next question. Um, okay. Question number four. What are your practices or habits around personal growth and development, how do you keep the momentum going? So this is already learning from what you have been doing. Probably I'll start with Joanna this time. Okay, so the practices or habits around personal growth and development and how I keep my momentum going. Okay, so maybe I could just share one or two things that I normally do, okay. First of all, I normally start my day with a quiet time. So I try to wake up at about 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Um, I try to sleep early if I can. <laughs> um, uh, I think that's the most important thing. And I personally think that having a healthy mind is very crucial. You know, uh, mental health is something that is really important for me. Um, and I think, you know, these are the things or these, these are the issues that has been, uh, been a hot topic if we've seen over the last couple of years of mental health, you see, among, among um, the, the younger generation. So I basically have to make sure that I always have a clear mind every morning and it helps, to be, uh, it helps me to be conscious the whole day. And secondly, I dedicate myself a lot to keeping fit and exercising. So I try to eat healthy, you know, eat right, and uh, make sure that, you know, work out about five, five times a week, if we can, four to five times a week. Half an hour, 20 minutes is enough. You see, just get the adrenaline rush going in the morning. And the best thing is to do it in the morning before you go to work. Trust me. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you've been trying that. I, I'm not so sure. But you should give it a shot. You know, it's really good. And um, I always make sure that I'm always in the know. All right. I try to dedicate at least one or two hours of my time a day to read the news. You see, opinions, journals about specific topics or others generally and the last one is I like to keep in touch with my friends you know good friends and and as well continue to do your hobbies you know life is not about just work you know 
there's that saying, you know, no all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, you see. So, yeah, you go, you go out, you know, have fun with your friends and things like that. So just to keep your mind sane. So those are the practices and habits um, I normally, uh, you know, go around for my uh, personal growth and development. Yeah. All right. Wow. So um, do you keep a journal? Do I keep a journal? <laughs> yeah, I said, what I'm seeing here is like you're pretty much like, okay, this is what I do, this is what I do, and like, you know, it's I think I like, think it's pretty, it's pretty regimed every day. I think like even my husband knows like, oh, okay, are you working out now? Like without even, you know, without even asking me like, like are you working out now? You say, oh, are you, are you doing this? Are you doing that? So, I don't know. Yeah, it's already, yeah, that's how it is if it's already a habit, right? Yeah, it's yeah. a habit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So let's hear from you, Viviante. Okay. Um, for me, um, how to keep the momentum going, uh, always focus on the motivation behind the cause that you want to champion. So I speak from the angle of uh, improving uh, and challenging the status quo in Sabah. Uh, what are the challenge, challenges that you'd like to tackle? Um, what are the outputs? An outcome. What are your key metrics to measure how uh, good is or, or how um, if, if your initiative uh, is, is good enough for the community? So by by measuring the impact and um, yeah, by measuring the impact, it will definitely help you to keep the momentum going because you will always do this check and balance. And if things go wrong midway, always have backup plans. I also do uh, reading a lot uh, and, and keep yourself updated about what's happening around you. Um, saya ni malas mau membaca sebenarnya. I hate reading but I think uh, this is very important. Um, like I said juga just now, like uh, you have to also, like I mentioned earlier, you have to uh, 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 appreciate different perspectives and views in life, right? So. Um, if you're if you're not having conversation with your friends, your family, reading book will will definitely um, help you a lot, lah. In this and um, like Joanna said, don't forget to have fun and some quality time with family. I know it's impossible to uh, have a perfect, healthy work life balance, but um, you just have to you know, try lah and make time. Especially like myself, it's very challenging now, Jacqueline, because um, my husband is in Cyber Jaya. Uh, I'm here in Sabah. So, uh, memang tidak selalu jumpa lah. And, and, but we will make time every day. Uh, without fail, we must video call. Uh, so, you just have to make time lah. Don't, apa, don't torture yourself. So, because... I know it can be quite addictive as well. I think you can relate, ah, Jacqueline. Yeah. It can be quite <laughs> addictive, but really, it, it, this is a very uh, good advice. Lah. I think you really have to uh, make some time juga for yourself. Uh, kalau tidak, mm. Totally agree. Mental. <laughs> Mental. Uh, in fact, I, if I really need that, and um, because I live, um, yeah, I'm, 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 alone so i'll just go out on my own i need to prioritize like uh, joanna mentioned just now mental health is your mm. first line of defense right mm -hmm. and another thing that i like from your sharing is that the check and balance that also relate yeah. to for you to be able to have a target so if when you have you see your direction you see you have your mm. target that gives you the direction and be focused on you know sure. to, to to be motivated and to keep on going Mm. And, and also I'd like to add a little bit Jack don't forget to check on your friends because sometimes like I said like myself pun kan like sometimes I just don't realize that I spend 18 hours a day uh, for work uh, so sometimes you just don't realize kan? so don't forget to check on your friends and, and um, make some time to uh, maybe take them out um, go for movies, makan, and all that. So I, 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 I like. Uh, to be honest, Jack, I suka. I really like what what you're doing. Um, I know you're a workaholic, but at the same time, 
you really take care of yourself. Betul, like you you apa ni? You really take care of yourself lah, very well. You you keluar with friends and 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 you uh, jaga yourself. Your uh, basically <laughs> yourself lah. Uh, so <laughs> I really love it. Thank you so much. And I think when you say about checking on your friends, I love our WhatsApp group. I mean, of course, it's a private WhatsApp group, but that's where we, you know, whatever that you have in your mind that you think is not healthy, you just share it there. So, I mean, at least uh, me and Vivi, because we have this WhatsApp group and a few other friends, right? So, I think that's that's really, really important. As much as it is, you think it's very um, trivial, but I think it's the most important part of our life. At least we have that um, support, right? Mm. But I know few questions for you here. So this is a question from okay from Nina Othman for both of you. Um, what can we, the general public, do more to help build more resilient communities, especially here in Sabah, since you are both from here? So I think um, this is um, referring to to mm -hmm. general public. Yeah, general public. So perhaps um, Joanna, would you like to? answer that yeah how can we help okay i think vivian also you know from her her angle and perspective you know i think that her you know her industry her line of work would also be very very helpful to build resilience within the community and i think the most important thing is that uh, the um, society as a whole need, has to be informed of what are the facilitation that we could help from from the government or from the state government you see the most important thing is i mean you know a lot of people would not uh, know that there are many initiatives from every single department especially you know under mti for example vivianti you know mm. they'll be like you know um under the saban new deal for example you yeah. see the state government has been given um has been giving money to help you see, uh, the some some of the um, uh, society ataupun uh, okay now I'm mixing Malay now <laughs> or or uh, I'm bilingual now um, or or for example like you know uh, uh, um, uh, what do you call this um, usahawan uh, what do you call this entrepreneurs. Uh, Entrepreneurs, yes, entrepreneurs. You see, they are like under Sabah Credit. For example, you have um, you know um, uh, uh, loans that you can get at a very low uh, interest that you can have. So I think how can we build resilience among all the community is that we have to inform them of what are their you know their their helps. Okay, outside there that could help you to stay um, sane and, and also resilient in, in what you're doing. So, you know, things is, it's, it's not the end of the world, but, um, you know, at the same time, it cannot be from one uh, person who is telling everything. It has to be from, you know, this, there has to be a reciprocation. So the community itself or the individual itself who needs help also have to have the initiative to seek you know, and to, to to look for things outside there. That what, uh, what is it yeah. that could help me? Yeah, yeah. Mm. I totally agree with that because sometimes um, we need to know what's needed, or or rather we need to understand what is it exactly. It's not just merely from the perspective or from the surface part of it, but it has to be understood for mm -hmm. us to you know to have a clear. Um, intervention if i can call it as intervention right um because of the interest of time um maybe i can just read the next questions um, sure. um which is i maybe this one i'm not sure who can answer this but probably uh, you can figure it out <laughs> what or how can we motivate our young women to be more vocal <laughs> all right perhaps one day in sabah we will have more women in politics championing mm. and in challenging and challenging status quo. I think I can answer that, Jacqueline. Right. Um, but this is just like on top of my head, lah. But um, uh, if 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 I have more points later on, I can answer to this uh, person. Uh, to me, the grassroots 
the the grassroots community like really that for example like ngo um, various NGO needs to collaborate and drive initiatives from the grass, the grassroots itself, mm -hmm. because you, um, the, the the closest person to this community are basically, because I understand politicians pun kan maybe they don't have uh, much time to really spend on the grounds. So the community leaders, the community builders uh, from NGOs really need to, uh, you know, do more initiatives at the grassroots. Uh, the grassroots level. I can give an example of this program, uh, Lean in Malaysia. Uh, I think in Peninsula, you would know this association. This Lean in Malaysia has really helped me a lot uh, in terms of my leadership, uh, things that I want to achieve in life. So I hope this kind of activity can, this initiative can be done here in Sabah as well. Uh, second, you got to believe in uh, the, champ the, the cause that you want to champion. Uh, so it doesn't matter what people think, but, but if you really believe in what you want to achieve, then definitely you can do it. I mean, I uh, had my experience as well, kena belittle, belittle kan? kena kasih kecil, kecil, or you're just, um, uh, someone actually told me, oh, for a Sabahan, you're quite smart. So what does it mean, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, but but really, uh, to to conclude, yes, one, um, I think the grassroots community really need to be uh, strong, collaborate, and second, believe in uh, the the cause that you want to champion. Mm. Wow, this is pretty much relevant to everyone. Although you're talking about um, you as you're explaining this, you you are referring to the you know those uh, interior communities. Mm. or communities in Sabah, but if we were really to reflect that in our own profession, it's, it's really relevant, it's really reflecting that so that we can understand that better, right? So um, let me go the next, uh, the last question. So because um, on behalf of AISM Malaysia, we would like to hear from you specifically for all our image consultants um, in AICI, what would be your advice to, for us to stay resilient amidst this challenging time. Uh, Joanna? Okay. Wow, <laughs> image consultant. <laughs> I think I'm the wrong person to be <laughs> giving such advice. <laughs> but um, maybe I would just like to summarize perhaps of what we have you know, discussed today. And I think today's topic is something that is really, really interesting, mm -hmm. especially you know, post uh, this pandemic and uh, having Vivianti and of course you, Jacqueline, yourself, you know, where, um, having this uh, conversation is really, really meaningful to me. And I've learned a lot from both of you tonight. But um, I think personally speaking, you know, what is it? My advice to all image consultants, first of all, I might be seeing, I might need to see you after this <laughs> for maybe image consultants. Oh, already. <laughs> Thanks. But you were ex untuk ngadau. That was a long time ago. <laughs> Anyways, but I think in life, you see, without a destination, what is the point, you see, and what would be your self-image? And uh, I think everyone is encouraged uh, to make their very best uh, of themselves and uh, to make use of uh, opportunities, of all the opportunities uh, as they come your way. So maybe that's perhaps a little bit of advice, not advice, but something that I would just like to because <laughs> I'm not the first best person to advise on image consultants. <laughs> All right, all right. Well, um, it's well. Although uh, probably because uh, if we were to to go into the subject matter itself, it seems like it's alien to us. But at the end of the day, whatever you do, you, you we are still living as a human being. You are carrying yourself, um, and therefore, like I, I think I've said it earlier, we are made out of mindset, set of mind that we have. That what 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 is it that we are. Uh, you know, consuming, and therefore, I mean, having, I mean, having words from you that's definitely uh, will add on into something that we can think of and how we can apply that to our self first, mm -hmm. right? So, Vivian T. Okay, mine very short. Um, 
there is light at the end of the tunnel. I know it's very easy to say all of this, like and Jack, like oh, stay positive and stuff like that. But really, this shall pass. And um, like what I've mentioned earlier, there must be something that God really wants us to learn from this pandemic. Uh, I'm affected. My husband affected. My sister's friends ada yang kena buang kerja, um, cut salary. Uh, I can only say, uh, stay strong, but step out from our comfort zones. I know it's not easy, but um, it, it's almost like we don't have a choice. Bahkan, Jack, Joanna. So, yeah. um, be innovative, be creative, uh, expand your horizons, um, do more networking because mm. uh, good things won't come to you if you don't go out and just try something new and mingle with new new people. Kan? So, and, and never ever under estimate yourself everyone has the potential to go far it is just a matter of discovering and nurturing it yay yay terus alright yeah and um i think the one of the biggest message that i got tonight is also around you being aware of where you are at this point of time and accept the reality mm-hmm. and from the harness whatever you have and uh, move on. And I think um, what in terms of application, it also it reminds me of uh, to not working, to not work in silo, silo mm-hmm. uh, but um, go out and expose yourself, be, be visible and, you know, and do what you can the best. Right. Mm-hmm. So before, thank you so much ladies. And uh, before thank we you. go off tonight, I would like to, share screen about our program about our uh, AICI third Asia conference allow me to share screen okay I would like to announce um, the AICI third Asia conference will be held on the 26 to 28th of um, March 2021. It will be held at uh, Grand Hyatt Kuala Lumpur. And uh, we would like to announce that we, if you like to be part of the conference, we are looking for e- uh, event partner. If you wish to take your business beyond, um, beyond this horizon, this is for you. If you wish to have more visibility, this is for you. And if you wish to upskill your knowledge on image, this is for you too. And how can you know this further? Uh, more information about this you can um, go to the to our facebook page or you can al- also message us and i would like to also announce uh, next week's uh, sessions on interchange forum we will have a session uh, branding and brand protection in the time of covid-19 we have Two speakers, expert, yeah, two experts uh, will be moderated by Dr. Diane Sen, my friend, and she's the head of education of AIC Third Asia Conference. Also, she is uh, one of my board members, uh, vice president membership at AIC Malaysia with the current term. And the speakers are uh, Peter Desmond Wee, an intellectual property lawyer, and also Professor Mark Lim, the head of school of Swinburne University. So we hope to see you next week, same time, uh, same uh, on Monday next week. And um, thank you so much for our audience. Uh, there are a few audience uh, here today and uh, we have um, also a few regular audience. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I would like to also convey my deepest appreciation to both of you. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for the learning, all right. So I think that's all for tonight. Right. Thank you for having us, Jack. Jack. Thank okay, you. Joanna. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Uh, signing Bye. off. Good night and take care. Good night. Okay, no more life. <laughs> she left.